you are approaching your PL, the profit and loss statement, all wrong. And what I'm going to share with you could dramatically shift the trajectory of your business. It's John Cheplak coming to you. And when I come to you, it comes from 15,000 plus one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with people that typically average a half a billion in sales volume and above, working with clients that do multiple billions. And also coming from someone who's actually done the work as a real estate agent and got a result, as a branch manager that got a result, and an executive that delivered a result. So this is tested and proven. And, you know, culture and people are talked about a lot, uh, but quite frankly, it's this um, air that is never defined and it's very general is the best way that I would describe it. So the PL, let's look at this and, and if you take this to heart and connect it with your head, this is quite frankly the differentiator. I think hopefully by now I say it humbly, but you can't argue with results. Um, there's something different that's going on in our uh, community and it is uh, the highest performing performers in the world. It's just really that simple. Um, and so when you take a look at how you approach your profit and loss statement, P&L, you're going right to the numbers and then people lead people based on the numbers. And don't get me wrong, numbers are a part of the game, but let's go to the grand scale. Let's take a look at uh, some people that are great leaders and maybe you've watched this happen and now you can discern it. You know, you're someone that has gone from 500 to 1,000 to 2,000, or maybe you're on a trajectory where you've gone um, from 100 transactions to 250 to 500. And I'm gonna tell you why. Sheer force and terror and the ability to generate leads and have the best lead conversion and have the best tech stack and have the best employees, employees uh, are wonderful. That's all wonderful and great. but. Look around you, and I would guarantee you that there are people in our industry right now, I do know, that are brilliant, brilliant in lead gen, brilliant in lead conversion, uh, brilliant in, in leading a staff of employees. But the real challenge is this art of the P&L called people in their lives. People in their lives. If you take a look at, and I could go back historically and look at, uh, a team that was at 500 transactions that has gone to 4,000 transactions. I can look historically at a team that's gone from 600 transactions to uh, nearly 2,000 transactions. And I can also look at the ones that have been stuck at 300, 400, and 500 transactions. And let me tell you what they are obsessed with. They're obsessed with the P&L. They're obsessed with the numbers. They're obsessed with making it a science project. They're obsessed with this big grand equation, this science project, this math project, that then they try and go to independent contractors and they can't get the movement. They can't get the results because they skip a critical step. See, I'll share with you what my 15,000 plus coaching calls have looked like. Um, and I don't sit on other coaching calls with other coaches and probably you're responsible for me to even have a commentary about what other coaching calls look like with other coaches. But I've received feedback before and with all due respect, it's numbers, 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 numbers. Human beings aren't inspired by numbers. And see, I can come to you with this truthfully because my central nervous system is wired and has experienced and operated in a branch office doing 1,400 transactions. As an executive of a multi-office, multi-state organization doing thousands of transactions, listen, I know the budgets, I know the performance, I know the projections, those don't move people. Those don't move the numbers. I'm sorry, they don't move the numbers. See, it's the P&L is the people and their lives, those independent contractors, the people and their lives. At what level are you making the deepest connections with those people? At what depths are you going to understand what each person's impediment is instead of, well, they don't do the work, so they're lazy. And so what happens is the people that stay stuck, they churn through amazing human resource that could be developed 
because they try and go just purely to logic and the science. See, here's the challenge with human beings is to get human beings to move is not a logic and a science. It is an art form. It is an art form. And that's that emotional side of the business that so many people talk about our culture or this. You know, listen, a monthly potluck ain't going to get her done. A monthly dart throwing outing ain't going to get her done. A monthly slip and slide dunk tank ain't going to get her done. It is having deep psychological and emotional bonds, seeking to understand, quite frankly, what moves that human being. Do you know the kind of leadership each one of your agents, I'm not talking about employees, each one of your agents will respond to, because keep in mind, they are an elevator asset. They can come and go. See, they leave on the elevator, go home. They don't have to come back. Your asset is your agents. I'm sorry, your leads, your tech stack, and your employees, they're not your asset. Your agents are. Because without those people and their lives, the true PL, understanding what's important to them, understanding historically what has not worked for them, their downfalls, their pitfalls, their challenges, their areas where they lack confidence, the areas they need to build confidence, okay? understanding where they are the most confident, understanding the reason at a true level why they want to do what they're doing. I'm not talking about a big why. I'm talking about deep to their core. Understanding the people and their lives. You can have average leads. You can have an average tech stack. You can have average staff. But if you have this deeply connected tribe village or community, you're going to get big results. And guess what? Challenge me. I've got the resume of clients that I work with that prove this over and over and over again. I've got a group of clients where we blew the lid off their organization because they captured this part. You know, over the years, did they really change what they were doing as a whole? Mm, sure, they changed with the market, but you want to know what they did from uh, operating their businesses, these big businesses? They always stuck to the basics. They certainly were innovators at a level, but really they focused on mastery. And you know what? To focus on mastery, what you have to do is you have to enroll a group of independent contractors of human beings into embracing repetition and boredom and consistency. Tell me how. You can tell me that you train and we train scripts and dialogues and objection handlers and marketing and copywriting and SEO and how to work in the CRM, all of those things, okay? But how are you moving people into action? Because that's all for not if you can't watch this. Facilitate a condition for someone to choose to be productive or choose not to be productive. Because the other mistake that we make driving at the PL, the profit and loss statement, we think we can make a human being productive. You're fighting human nature. You're fighting human nature. So, what I'm sharing with you, and I know I'm behind the curtain, I see. I see the people that are stuck and I see the people that continue to thrive. And the difference is those that are stuck are stuck in the profit and loss statement. They're stuck into every science project on one lead, which matters. But the ones that really grow, they are obsessed with, they're neurotic about the people and their lives. So I'll give you a simple process to follow. When's the last time you asked your people how do you want to be led individually? Do you ask that in the interview? Do you ask what kind of leadership have you responded really, really well to? What kind of leadership do you not respond well to? And of course, going deeper underneath and behind those questions. See, people perform and people leave you based on how they join you. Now let's go into current space and time, the people on your team or in your brokerage. You have three types of people. You have your top, you have your middle, and then you have your bottom. Let me tell you what you do with the bottom. Coach them up or out, period. 
You coach them up or out. Certainly what you want to do with those bottom end or brand new people, you want to coach and lead them to what they've shared with you. They respond really, really well to. But when they're not productive, I want you to write this down, is you need to move to risking the relationship. And here's what I mean by risking the relationship. You move to a leadership style that creates tension, not stress, and learning how to do that and have the language patterns on how to facilitate that tension that risks the relationship that challenges them with respect. Who's taught you that one? See, most can't because they haven't been in the trenches doing it with 50, 100, or thousands of people for a sustained period of time and delivered a result. I have. And that's the reason it's happening. The happening being the results that the leaders I work with outpace everyone else. Now let's take a look at your middle to core group. Here's where there's a massive breakdown, a massive breakdown in productivity, a massive breakdown in retention is you think that every single one of them wants to do more. No, they don't. And you know something, part of the, here's the challenge with when agents leave and with the retention process. My goodness, 99% of the time, they don't tell you the real reason they left. And that's frustrating because we want to learn. We want to grow. We want to get that feedback. So if there's anything realistically, we can change. But here's the big reason they leave. You're trying to get more, more, more out of them. And here's what I'd coach to you as a leader is that if someone is productive, profitable to the organization, the relationship supports their financial wants and needs, and they're happy there, then support them to be happy there. But the only way you can find out is by asking. You go to your middle core people, John, I want to sit down with you. I want to do a better job as a leader. And what's really important to you over the next 12 months, is it increasing your income or is it maintaining the income level that you're at, maintaining the, the time that you have, which would be the best way for me to lead you in the next 12 months? Ask people. It's not that complicated. See, the mistake we can make as leadership too is, is we want validation and we want to keep our promises, giving people value. Well, the greatest value we can give a human being is seek to understand, then be understood. Seek to understand, then be understood, then meet them where they're at. Because if I charge at the person that is a contributor to the organization, um, is a contributor from their, their spirit, right? Um, their involvement is a contributor financially and, um, you know, hey, has an income level they're happy with, but I keep charging at them to do more, do more, do more. There's, there is a mismatch in the messaging, which creates a mismatch in the relationship and they'll leave you. Many of you watching this or listening to this live or in the recording, you've had an aha moment. Oh my goodness. See, you can't charge at everyone more, 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 more. That's not what coach or leader is. Charge at people and, and, and get more out of them. No, meet them where they're at. Find out what they want. And you know what? If it aligns with you, they're with you. If it doesn't align with you, they're not on your team. They're somewhere else. And that doesn't make them bad or wrong. It doesn't make you bad or wrong. See, that's called alignment and gaining agreement. So in your middle to core people, what you want to find out is, where do you want to go? Do you want to go up or do you want to stay where you're at? Awesome. Perfect. So at what lengths are you willing to go to? Are there any changes you'd like to make to what you're currently doing? What are your expectations of me? Do I have permission to hold you accountable to it? Ask, 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 ask. And they'll tell you where to go. And then when there's a breakdown in the result that they're getting, based on what they said, you revisit what they told you they wanted. See, that's people and their lives. And let me remind you, that's where we focus and our numbers blow away everyone that's profit and loss statement. And don't get me wrong. My clients run highly profitable organizations. Okay. Let's go to step three, your top people. So we've talked about the bottom, coach them up or coach them out. We've talked about the middle to core people. Again, people in lives. Okay. Did you want to stay where you're at? Can we support you to do that? Or did you want to step up? Be them where they're at. Here's what your top people want. 99.9% .9 of the time. And, you know, the rooms that I speak in, um, people make a substantial investment. The average price to come to one of my events is $2,600. And so these are high performers, okay? Or those that, you know, they haven't hit that, you know, big number they want, but they're, they're not worried about being a little fish in a big pond. 
okay? They come in those rooms. And you know the number one question I ask them? What do you want more of? You can only pick one, time or money. Time or money. I think last room, a couple hundred people in our room, leaders, they've invested big dollars to be in the room. No one raised their hand for money. They want time. So let me ask you this, people and lives. People and lives. But you're focused on the P&L and their P&L, the profit and loss, the profit and loss, profit and loss. The P&L, the way that most leaders are approaching it, will create a disconnection, a churn, and a flat line and a stagnation in your business. We break through the lids, the ceilings in your organization time and again. And when we get stuck, we know it's a people thing every single time. And so with those top people, they want time. How can you facilitate a condition in the environment, in your leadership to create more time for those top, top people? Just, you know, one of many different roster evaluations that I do, I will review a roster, the human beings, the persona, the independent, dependent, interdependency, um, way, way more than I'll look at a P&L. I don't need to look at the P&L every dang minute, but people default to that because it's easier. Humans are a lot more work, but the ones that will do this deep work are the ones that move their organizations dramatically. Dramatically. Look around, look at what my clients are doing. Now, let me end with this. Here's the toughest thing and why I think, I don't think I believe the biggest reason that this doesn't happen with many leaders is this, and maybe it's not happening for you. The number one person and the number one life you must focus on neurotically, obsessively is yours. You've got to look at those things in you that you don't want to look at. You've got to improve on those things that are challenging you because you know the biggest thing with leaders, it's not being the smartest, the, the trickiest, or, and I don't mean tricky from a lacking integrity, but you know, you're just, oh my gosh, you're so brilliant. No, it's the leader that's believable. And the leader that's believable is the one that walks the talk. It's the leader that's growing themselves as a human being first. You can't grow other human beings until you grow yourself. You can go chase strategy and tactic and science and leads and tech stacks and, and all of these different things. It's all for naught if you don't do the work here. See, the growth of your business is inside your business, not outside your business. The growth of you as a human being and as a leader is inside you, not outside of you. The true PL that wins and has always won, and I was taught it many years ago by my mentor, that has allowed me the privilege to do the work that I do today, is the people in their lives PL, not the profit and loss PL. The results of my clients don't lie.